first and foremost, my name is Greg Johnson, and I am your Houston chiropractor. I say those things like that on the video for a specific reason, because when I say I'm your Houston chiropractor, guess what I'm putting in their psyche already? I'm already their chiropractor. I, so I, every little thing that I do, from the finger point to, to my words, have intention behind it and they're for a specific purpose. I was told by a Hollywood producer that if I step into the camera and point, that I'll immediately engage the audience, which is what I'm doing on every video. That's why you see me doing the introduction the way I do the introduction. I'm a 1981 Palmer graduate right from this campus. Chiropractic has blessed me my entire career, 40 years. And over that 40 year time frame, I became a chiropractic biophysics student of Don Harrison and Dr. Dan Murphy's work, and that's the neurophys and the biomechanics and biophysics that I learned, and then I started applying that to the actual adjusting. Chiropractic biophysics does a great job publishing research and talking about X, Y, Z in their analysis, but there's never been a true chiropractic adjustment to address the Y axis in the history of chiropractic. So I just developed this and have been doing this very adjustment for 40 years on a different device previously, but now this one. And we've been seeing phenomenal outcomes on our patients. We've uh, published our first case study in April of this year, and we're working on other scientific research that I can't get into because you're not supposed to talk about your research at this time. Uh, and I won't, but we're, we're making headway in the right way to disseminate this information scientifically, and I am a big research guy, so I have combined being a subluxation-based chiropractor with an evidence-based background as well. I'm up at 3.30, 4 o'clock every morning leaning over the research on Google Scholar. Now that's where I came across Heidi Horvick's research down in New Zealand. She's with New Zealand Chiropractic College Research Department. Australian Spinal Research Foundation has been publishing some really good stuff in the past few years as well on subluxation, high velocity, low amplitude adjusting, which is what this is, and how that affects the neurology and neuroplasticity of the brain even. So Palmer's original brain-body connection is relevant, it just is not relevant in the way they thought it was. They thought it was bone out of place, crushing a nerve. That's been disproven. So a lot of chiropractors have discarded subluxation as being old, uh, useless stuff. When actually the application of it now is even more documented and more relevant than it ever has been. And that's what we're teaching and that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna open this up to you guys' questions because I know our profession has questions, practicing physicians, alumni have questions, and you guys as students have questions too. And that's why I'm here is to address any of those questions that you might have as opposed to getting up here and lecture to you. <laughs> so we're once over the ladies. Where did the y-axis distraction decompression adjustment come from? Well, uh, a Palmer graduate who I went to see in Austin, Texas in 1981, Dr. Russell Vance, and he's down in Clearwater, Florida now. He did an adjustment on me using the y-axis pull. He called it a pull adjustment. Back in 1981 on me, I had compression fractures at T11, T12, from the compression in the in high school. And no chiropractic adjustment had given me any relief of those symptoms that I had since that fracture until I had this done. Now, when I first had it done, I thought I was going to punch the guy hurt so bad. But he was tearing loose and ripping his car tissue and adhesions loose. And a week later, I felt better than I had in 20 years of my last, of my life since high school. And it's the only thing that ever alleviated my pain and symptoms of any chiropractic procedure that's ever been done on me. And I've been adjusted by some of the best chiropractors in the world. Thompson, Gonstead, all of them. Because that's, that's how old I am. <laughs> I actually learned from those guys. When would you not Did that answer your question? He doesn't, he doesn't do it. He didn't ever call it the ring bear. So this, over the last 40 years, I've just perfected the technique, basically, from what I learned. That's how it's come to be. Yes, sir. When would you not use this type of technique? 
when would I not use it? On somebody who may have atherosclerotic changes, that they have plaquing in their carotid or vertebral arteries that could be created risk for stroke. But that's with any adjustment, cervical adjustment. You know, you should rule those things out anyway. Fractures, I don't think fractures, arm strain malformations in the cranial magnum, um, neoplasms, of course, metastasis, cancer, and so on. Severe, severe osteoporosis. And I don't do advanced dish either. You know what dish is, right? It's a bladder part of AS, ankylosing spondylitis, where the spine fuses and get a bad big spine. I'm not interested in breaking off anything, ligaments or bones, by trying to force it, so I just don't do it. Because I'm not willing to put the patient's health at risk. So we rule that. In fact, I, I uh, did not have just one patient this week because of AS that I uh, picked up during my history of the team. I do a very thorough medical case history on every single patient, uh, comprehensive orthopedic neurological examination. So I know what's going on with that patient before I ever touch him, lay him with any adjustment, not just this one, but any adjustment. And that's what every chiropractor should be doing on every new patient visit anyway, in my opinion. You should do a thorough history and examination to get to know your patient and understand what their real problems are so you can come to a provisional diagnosis and formulate the proper treatment program for them. I mean, that's really what we're trained to do. A lot of guys get out of school though, and they just lay them on the table, start palpating. Okay, well, I'm going to pop you here and there and everywhere. And they're not really doing a thorough job of the history and examinations a lot of times. That's what I find. And I've learned that from the doctors who are coming in learning this procedure from me. Because the first thing I do in my three-day seminar is I have them do a history and examination on me that they're currently doing. Just so I can evaluate their clinical competence at that point. Or their clinical skills. Most of them are competent, but they just have lost the skills in the, in the repertoire of actually doing them correctly. You know, you get away from school, you start losing this and that and everything else, but if you stay on top of things, you're always going to do a thorough history, you're always going to do a thorough orthopedic, neurological, and chiropractic examination. I check posture three-dimensionally on the X, Y, Z axes before and after every single adjustment. You know, so pre and post orthopedic tests are important for me too. I'm always checking deer field leg checks and sacral deviation tests, knockless tests pre and post on all these patients. And you will see objective improvement on these people once you do those tests and the patients feel that too. So it's not just a good practice mechanics and, and uh, procedure that you do, it's, it's actually very good for patient education too because if you bring their legs up and they get knockless they're hurting their lumbosacral spine and sacrum when you bring their legs up and then you do it after the adjustment guess what they know immediately wow what he did just worked it fixed my low back pain just like that so you're getting pre and post ortho test too yes sir have you had any issues with patients post decompression the only the only side effects, if you will, of this adjustment is soreness on top of the iliac crest where we have the pins affixed to the iliac crest. Sometimes they get bruising there. Soreness is there for the first 72 hours and I always tell every single patient that. If that's not really a, a bad effect because if I went to the gym and worked out hard for the first time in a long time, if I didn't get sore I wouldn't have done anything. Same thing with the spine. If you're not getting them sore from your initial adjustment, you probably didn't do a whole lot getting the joint through its maximum joint range of motion. And, and I adjust everybody through their maximum joint range of motion, bring the, bring the uh, vertebrae and the tissues to tension, and then you hit it with the high velocity, low amplitude thrust, which you reach the paraphysiological space and adjust the joint to the anatomical integrity of the ligaments. And that restores full joint range of motion but it also fires off mechanoreceptors in the synovial joints that you've affected. So you're getting an afferent neurology going up into the brain and then getting efferent neurology coming back out of the brain and you're actually affecting neuroplasticity, which is the whole basis of why I do all of this. Mirror image adjusting, cross crawl walks after the adjustment so that their brains can readapt to this new configuration and, and uh, 
adaptation to this new alignment because the brain's constantly adapting to its environment, both externally and internally. We want to reestablish neurology from the brain body to adapt to this new biomechanical configuration I just put them in, their, their new norm, if you will, so that we can make this for not only quick results, but longer lasting results too. And I have the patient do 10 minute walks every day like a fast walk race first thing in the morning before they do anything else to reestablish that same neural connection. What do you say to some, uh, someone who's critical of the adjustment and says it's lack specificity? I hear that all the time actually, that's a good question. Because a lot of chiropractors will say, well I do suggest specifically because I'm a Gonstead practitioner and I'm just going to adjust the subluxation that causes this specifically at C5, right? I hear that all the time. T2, T5, whatever the specificity is, we have patients coming in to see us every single day that have already had those specific adjustments. They don't feel relieved of their symptoms and their pain. My whole philosophy of doing this and hypothesis is the more mechanical receptors I fire off, the more neurology I'm changing. So I'm actually adjusting shoulders, elbows, wrists, hips, knees, ankles, everything. I'm firing off so many afferent impulses into the brain it overrides the pain impulses. So I say, you know what, if you want to continue to be specific in your practice, I'll just continue seeing all your patients who come to me for real relief. And that's the bottom line, because we have those every day. Well, I've been to this guy, but he does specific adjustments and he won't do everything that you do. They want full body adjusting, they want full spine adjusting, they want a comprehensive fix. And this is gets them out of pain. Something that I like to bring up also with patients that come to me with that concern is we learn in biomechanics class that when you make that thrust on one single vertebra, whether it be a cervical rotary break or some sort of like the uh, double transverse maneuver, you're not only affecting that single vertebra, you're affecting the vertebra above and below. Well, so not just that, you get compensatory kinetics all up and down. So for those who think they're only adjusting one segment every time they make a thrust, we know that's, that's not, not true valid research. anyway. Yeah. You're, you're affecting you're the unit above and the unit below getting compensatory kinetics on everything that you do. I'm just getting compensatory kinetics on everything because I'm adjusting everything. I mean, when a patient walks in, we had a patient come in from Miami this past week who could barely walk because he fractured his pelvis in eight places in a motorcycle accident four years ago. I mean, he was, he was dragging his right leg. He didn't have foot drop, but he was really had altered ambulatory kinetics which created altered compensatory kinetics because he had a scoliosis in his spine too. I looked at his MRIs and x-rays and everything that he brought with him. Because we always look at those two. I mean, a lot of people think I'm just laying people down on the table and yanking on their necks. That never happens. I look at diagnostics. In fact, they have to bring their diagnostics with them or I'll order them myself. So we're not just willy-nilly throwing people on the table and cracking them and popping them. You know, I like to refer to our fans as crack addicts, but that's just because you know, I'm engaging my fans. That's why they stick with me. That's why they refer other people to me. I get referrals in my office every day from crack addicts. Uh, they're employees or family members or whoever else. I was told by my sister to come see you. I said, is she a patient here? No, but she watches your videos. So, you know, as long as you're doing professional chiropractic care the way it's supposed to be done and you're educating your audience on that, that's that's my goal and that's that's my intention and that's what I'm going to continue to do. Yes, sir. What would you say is the most important aspect of your table that you developed? That's a good question too. This table has a whole lot of different features, but probably the single most important aspect of it are these adjustable pins that you can put on top of the iliac crest bilaterally to lock the pelvis down. So I'm getting a secure fulcrum down here on the iliac crest, which is also encompassing the sacrum itself. This this piece here uh, raises and lowers the lower legs to bring the legs up parallel to the floor so that we relax the lumbosacral spine and paraspinal musculature all the way up and down. So laying flat like this, if you lay flat like this all night long, this would hurt your low back because there's too much tension in their lordosis. But when you bring the legs up, 
And I've got all this uh, electronics enhanced, so you only have to push one button and it brings it all the way up. And we don't want to scratch the table. Yeah. So see, that's he's not parallel, so I bring him up parallel, and that's an important aspect too to get the patient in a the most relaxed position. Now, normally I lift the legs up without the pins being in there so the patient can feel this too because this is how I tell patients to sleep as well. On their back with no pillows so they're getting cervical lordosis in the <coughs> cervical spine and relaxing the lumbosacral spine muscles. And then I pin them in and I tell them it's gonna be tight. It might not be very comfortable but I got you in there tight to do a good job. That's one of the other things that I teach my doctors too, because they, they're afraid they're getting it too tight on people. You want it tighter. The tighter, the better. Because if they slip through here, then you're going down the side of the iliac crest and it hurts even worse. And you're not getting the same fulcrum to pull from either. It reduces the velocity of your adjustment. That's a good question. That's, that's the main features. Now we put some other features on here for the doctors and the patients. Patients who come in to see us that can't move around, can't bend and lift, we'll get up on chairs or equipment. The table goes down pretty low for them to get on there. This meets the American Disabilities Act requirement for the IRS to give you a 50% tax deduction on this table. So immediately when you buy this table for $7,999, you get 50% tax credit immediately. It only takes 40 adjustments and a $100 adjustment to pay off this table after that. So for the doctor, I mean, I'm a little taller, so I don't want to have to bend over and hurt my back the whole time either. So the doctor can change the elevation of the table to suit their height requirements too, or their needs. So the problem category would have to change this for them as well? Yeah. I mean, it's important. A lot of these constant guys, you know, they're hurting their shoulders and elbows and wrists from doing these procedures because they're in bad biomechanical positions. They're putting their shoulders, elbows, and wrists, and their spines at risk. A lot of them have spine problems too. This technique allows us to change where we are with it. If you're shorter, you can go lower. If you're taller, you can go higher. And just, you also get, you wanna get the best uh, angles too, because I get down here, this towel wraps around the cervical spine tightly so that I get a contact on the base of the occiput bilaterally. Put this other part in the front under their mandibles and have their teeth closed. It's important to tell patients to keep their teeth together and don't bite their tongue. You don't want them to clinch them, just keep them together and not bite their tongue because that would be a pretty bad side effect they bit their tongue off. <laughs> so we get down parallel. I get a lean into it. You always, as with any adjustment, you bring the spine to tension and then you deliver a high velocity, low amplitude thrust into the spine using the art of chiropractic and your innate intelligence to make sure you're doing this artfully and correctly. The doctor can feel it moving all the way down. The patient can feel it moving all the way down. If it doesn't go all the way down, guess what I'll do? I'll hit him again. Double dinger, I call him. <laughs> but you know what? And some patients ask for it. Well, I didn't go all the way down. I said, well, hold on then. Reach in your left toe and hit him because they might not relax fully the first time. And that's important to you. You have to feel the relaxation of the patient's spine and, and muscle tension while they're in your hands. That's the part of the art of adjusting anything. That's a good question. Uh, what other features of the table did I not describe? I think you did it I think so. It's got electronics over here that you can preset memory buttons. So I just set one at the patient normal high, two would go up higher for the longer legged person, and three usually is for our NFL NBA guys. You lift your leg way high. I have one question to wrap it up. Sure. If you want. Yeah. Uh, if I was a doctor or a student watching this video, how would I go about inquiring for more information on how to learn from you on something like this? Well, if you go to our website, Advanced Chiropractic uh, Equipment, LLC, Advanced Chiropractic Equipment, LLC.com, there's two tabs on there. There's one on there for the equipment, which we sell this table and also the Hill AC uh, 190 air drop table that is the biophysics table that I use in my office as well. But there's a seminar tab as well. And you go to click on the seminar tab, there's an application that we have people fill out that talks about their education, where they went to school, what procedures they currently use, um, where they're intending to use this, if they're doing any other type of decompression in their office. Because a lot of chiropractors out there, and you probably run into these people, 
they're using these glorified traction machines like the DRX 9000 and some of these other decompression devices that are on the market that are running 80 to 100 grand to buy those. This table goes for $7,999 and you can pay it off in 40 adjustments. I don't know too a lot of chiropractic equipment you can do that with. And so anyway, you fill out the information on the seminar that comes directly into our office and somebody from Advanced Chiropractic Equipment LLC will get back to you and schedule you to come down for a seminar. The seminar costs $1,000 for three days and we have hotel uh, contracts with the high reed see across the street from us that you can stay there for $79 a night, which is a pretty good rate. Uh, what would they learn at the seminar when they come down to the well, First thing I do with them, I have them do a history and examination on me so I can assess the current level of their clinical skills because I need to know where to start. And then I go over histories in detail, orthopedic neurological exams, chiropractic exams, biomechanics, biophysics, lines of drives are important, uh, contacts are important. Because if you're not contacting this properly and you're not getting the proper line of drive, you're not doing the adjustment right. And you're going to get poor outcomes. One of the most in-depth clinical experiences ever. For most of these chiropractors that come in, just blown away. It's the best seminar they've ever been to because it's all clinical. They're not sitting down looking at a, a screen the whole time. If you're personalized one-on-one -on -one or two-on-one -on -one with Dr. Brown. Well, you actually get to see me doing real patients with real problems, too and hearing and seeing their responses immediately following the adjustment. So these guys were just blown away. We've got people flying in from New York and LA and UK, getting this done and changing their lives in a three day period, more than any other technique they've ever seen in their lives. So I allowed them to see all that. They had to sign business associate agreements. They have to get a temporary Texas license to the Texas Board of Chiropractic Examiners. We vet them. They have to get a letter of good conduct from their state board to our state board. So we vet these chiropractors along with the application that they fill out that was the answer to your question or your question on uh, what do they need to do to come because we only want to train and have affiliated with Team Ringdinger, which is how I describe doctors that I've trained to do this and professionals that are actually doing this technique. Uh, we want to make sure that they are doing exactly the same kind of quality care that I'm doing in my office. So we're vetting them very closely. I turned the doctor away last week, two weeks ago now actually, that came in from Florida because he had wrong intention. He was wanting to do it just as a gimmick and get new patients in the door. Those aren't the kind of people we're looking for. We're looking for serious minded licensed chiropractors who want to apply these skills and these uh, clinical adjustments on the XYZ axes to their practice and, and the helping their patients. So if you're coming in with the wrong intention, you're not gonna get by me. You know, a lot of people think I'm just doing this for the money. I don't need the money. I make plenty of money in my practice. I'm doing this to change the standard of care in the chiropractic profession to address the y-axis, which this is the first technique in the profession that I'm aware of that actually addresses the y-axis through an adjustment. Do you guys know of any others that are doing that? Besides the y-strap, the y-strap's a joke. They're, they're cocking people's heads sideways and lifting up on it and yanking all at the same time with no, with no fixation. Which wasn't the original intention of the watch strap. No, that was only developed for a mild cervical traction with the bond is where that came from. Whereas this is specifically designed This is specifically the designed and made to do the ring danger, which is the official name of the ring danger is manual spinal neural decompression adjustment on the Y axis. That was way too long to be writing in my chart notes every time. So I came up with ring dinger, just put RD in my notes, and it's a shorthand basically. And ring dinger just caught on. The world knows ring dinger now. The people searching on Google for a ring dinger doctor, that's all they gotta put in there. Ring dinger docs in the country, and they'll pull up all of our team ring dinger docs for them to go see. And people always ask me all the time, are you afraid you're gonna saturate the market and deplete your your practice to take away from what you're doing. Competition has not ever been a concern of mine. 
people come to you either through a referral or through watching your videos or whoever because of who you are. And, you know, I, I will train everybody who is serious about providing good care to their patients and, and does this ethically and professionally. And I'm not scared of losing any patients to anyone. So, I mean, Tristan, I taught Tristan how to do all this. I taught Jeremy how to do all this. They don't do it, of course, because they're not licensed to adjust anywhere. But they know how to. They know the entire biomechanics and the biophysics and the procedures to do it. I've seen it done hundreds of times. Yeah, on real people with real problems. We've got people in here with spinal canal stenosis, radiculopathies, herniated discs, everything, scoliosis that they're seeing positive outcomes in those patients all the time. I've been doing this for 40 years, and out of that 40 years, not one patient, not one, has ever even led to being injured, besides the soreness on the iliac crest that I told you about earlier. And I've been uh, insured, and I'm out of practice with the NCMIC for 40 years. Never had a malpractice claim, never filed a claim. NCMIC has given me money back now on my policies because I have a clean record for so long. And plus they are now financing this table to other licensed chiropractors through NCMIC. You don't think they'd be financing it if they thought it was dangerous, do you? The Texas board wouldn't be licensing chiropractors temporarily to come into the state and learn this if they thought it was dangerous to the public because that's their goal and their mission to protect the public. And that's mine too. People, people think I'm just doing this for gimmicks and YouTube views and revenue. I don't need that YouTube revenue. I mean, any businessman that doesn't do monetization of their videos, though, would be crazy. I mean, Google's paying me to show what I do. I mean, why? Yeah, yeah, I was doing this for 30, well, 40 years total before YouTube ever came into existence, which I started that back in 2013. But I don't know any smart businessmen that wouldn't monetize their advertising if they could get paid for their own marketing. And this is a form of marketing, but it's not really because I'm not selling anything. The only thing I'm doing is showing what this technique does to people. And you're seeing live unedited videos of all my patients. I don't edit my videos. I don't cut things out. You're seeing raw reactions and raw pre and post orthopedic tests, pre and post posture. I check posture pre and post after every single adjustment. So we're doing it the right way. We're practicing chiropractic, in my opinion, the way it was meant to be practiced. And I'm gonna to continue to educate the planet on that and the science behind it. Good questions though, what else? You got one? Yes, a couple earlier. Well, oh, he, had a, he had, had the question about the seminar, but you already answered it. But you're, you're wrapping up away the table, right? Yeah, we're, we're going to be drawn. In fact, we'll do that on video, too. Tristan, why don't you go ahead and do that? No, I'll hold the bucket up and let you draw because I don't want to be accused of being biased. Searching <laughs> around. We're going to give away some t shirts, too, with it? Sure. They're always happy to give away my stuff. <laughs> is this the t shirt or the seminar? This is the seminar, first one. And it is. Michael Smith. Michael Smith. He's not here right now, but I know exactly who that is. Okay. So, Michael Smith, you have been drawn here to receive a three day seminar at my office in Houston, which is the Ringdinger Seminar. Uh, free. Now, the only, this is the only thing I've ever given away, and that's to Palmer students. I just don't give my services away because they're valuable, and I don't believe in doing that. So, but I did want to do that because Palmer College of Chiropractic is responsible for who I am today, and I want to support Palmer and their students and faculty as much as I possibly can. So, Michael, you've won the big prize. Okay, we'll draw one for some polo shirts now. We have men's and women's polo shirts and t-shirts. Team Ring Danger. Here, I'll let you read them off. Colby Caston. I know Kobe. Well, tell him he won a shirt. He wants one. He needs to come by and pick it up pretty quickly. I'm not mailing them out. Well, you'll have them. We, we can get I believe them. Yeah, we, we can get the shirts. So, see Tristan or Jeremy following this this homecoming event. This is, by the way, this is Palmer's 125th homecoming. It's actually the 126th year birthday of chiropractic this year. But because of COVID last year, there was no in-person homecoming. 
So this is the 125th homecoming event that we're at. I was at the one two years ago before COVID with Tristan, which is when he first started here at Palmer. He's in seventh trimester right now. Jeremy's in fifth trimester right now. He's getting ready to get in the clinic. And uh, when, when people get into chiropractic for the right reasons because it's helped them and changed their lives and they want to change other people's lives in a positive way, those make the best chiropractors. And Palmer is a world-class chiropractic educational institution. It's the fountainhead of chiropractic it's where it was born. And, and I will always consider Palmer College of Chiropractic to be the best chiropractic college in the world. And we'll continue to support them financially as well as uh, with, our, with our love and with our practice and with our videos. If you notice, I got a big Palmer banner up in my office that I leave there the whole time and it's in most of my videos. Palmer does not endorse what I do, nor do they sanction what I do. But I chose to promote Palmer because I love it so much and I love what they do here. So that, that's my decision. They don't pay me to put that banner up like some people have said in the past. I hear all kinds of comments from different people and, and trolls on, the, on our YouTube videos. That, you know, well, they must be paying you to put Palmer stuff up there all the time. No, they're not. In fact, I pay them. I donate money to them. So anybody else have any other questions before we... In this, I was been a great homecoming up here in Davenport, Iowa, with at Palmer College of Chiropractic, and I uh, commend Dr. Dennis Marchiori, who's the Chancellor and President, CEO of Palmer College of Chiropractic, the staff, the research department, and all the fine people in the alumni department, which have dealt with us over this past several years, because I'm an alumnus, the same as a lot of other chiropractors around the world. And Palmer is a truly world-class institution. It treats the science, art, and philosophy of chiropractic the way it was meant to be taught and the way it was meant to be practiced. And we will continue to support them. And we thank you for watching our YouTube videos and continuing to support us with your views and with your referrals. So we thank you. This is your Houston chiropractor, Dr. Gregory Johnson, coming to you from Palmer College of Chiropractic 2021. Homecoming, 125th Homecoming with Tristan Went and Jeremy Hickton that are also interns of mine who are now students here at Palmer. And we love them and wish them well and, and we're glad that they're going to be Palmer chiropractors. And you guys too, by the way. Thank you for taking and time to be here and ask these questions and put your time into becoming good chiropractors. That's important to our profession. Thank you all. So we'll see y'all soon.